We are live. This is the Alien Scientist channel. Um, I want to do a recap of yesterday's APEC conference. That's the Alternative Propulsion Engineering Conference. Yesterday, we had Tom Valone, Glenn Robertson, and Mike Gamble on. And then quite a long after chat after Mike Gamble left for... Mike Gamble left around five after five hours at the five hour mark, and then we went on for another almost uh, hour and a half in private discussion afterwards. Um, and then we probably went on till like two in the morning. I don't know. I, I left around midnight, but these guys go these guys go late with uh, the discussions and the after chats um, on these things as well. But I just want to do a recap real quick to uh, do some highlights. I put these timestamps on the video where people can go to this video. It's the first link in the description under this video and um, click on that link and it will bring you to this video. You can check out my comment with the timestamps talks about this JL not in uh, JL Nodden Labs did a ton of uh, replications and, and has a ton of data and information, which was later replicated by NASA and other other labs. Um, really cool work, uh, really cool history there. Electrokinetics was this thing that was mentioned. I've never heard of before, but it's an interesting and different approach to the theory of electromagnetic and gravitational fields via the idea of electro electrical movements and stuff. Um, and and a, a possible explanation for what's going on in apparatus like the, the Bifeld Brown experiment and uh, asymmetric capacitor experiments and some of these other experiments that uh, people have built working lifters out of. And we show and demonstrate a couple of videos of those and talk about them, including Tim Ventura's work, who's the host of the APEC conference. We also, um, he mentions and gives a shout out to uh, Mark McCandlish, who passed away recently, and the legend of the ARV and electropulsed hovercraft that was built by the military and tested an experimental X-craft that still should be declassified and needs to be declassified. Uh, Ron Cullis. That'll be the day. Um, then we got into the second part with uh, Glenn Robertson or also Tony Robertson. He calls himself Tony Robertson. And... Uh, makes the, my 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 friend makes the joke that every time i say tony roberts and he thinks of tony robbins but not the same guy um sorry for that reference but uh whit brantley uh is the head of uh the nasa advanced he was the head uh he passed away um a couple of years back i think 2014 or something 2011 maybe um but he was the head of the nasa advanced propulsion research labs at huntsville and Tony worked there with Ning Li and all these other guys. And uh, there were some interesting things said about that because it got brought up at the end of the conference. And I know she's a, a popular topic within the UFO community and the, I guess, the media as well focused on her story and her and specifically for whatever reason. But um, it was uh, it was curious that uh, she was she she did have a theory and she was part of that group and there was a lot of rumors that she went to china which we'll get into in a second um but first i want to mention that wow you got to watch tony's the whole presentation uh glenn robertson's uh presentation here this was phenomenal stuff and a whole introduced me to a whole bunch of new papers on ideas that i'd already thought of and and, and knew about and this is so relevant to Ken's paper on Phoenix theory and his whole idea of how to generate these um, these states and, and how to generate the mathematics because it goes a little bit, uh, his, Ken's theory goes a little bit beyond this and I'll, I'll explain that in a second when we get to this uh, this part in the mini universe model that he shows and proposes. And Ken's theory, you take the odd and the even terms out and when you separate them, you get, you get the different, you get the different aspects of relativity. And, um, and quantum mechanics and unified in one theory, which is crazy to th this is to think about the uh, this is the way I envisioned it is this whole idea of our, our whole interpretation of photons and trying to understand what photons are. It's just this exchange of energy that permeates the whole vacuum that tells everything where everything else is. And it's all based around these information structures, which are points where information gets trapped around this 
essentially a topological a, a topological domain um, and it's all about connectivity and connectedness within the quantum vacuum and how things relate in these vibrational in this vibrational spheres but um it's interesting that he, he proposes this whole gravitational model which i, I it's it's fascinating um, i'm not going to get into to it too much because it's it's too com complex and technical to do in a brief discussion but definitely get into that and and check out his mini universe model then we had mike gamble back on from yeah, boeing aerospace um, always a pleasure to have Mike on. He's he's a wealth of knowledge, and you know could probably present a couple more f times at, for hours on different things and uh, and teach us stuff. But uh, I have so many more questions about all this this stuff. We talked about it a little bit in the in the aftermath um, in the Q and A section and and in the in the end of this conference. Um, but the ideas of spinning matter close to the speed of light. Well, the idea is that matter is trapped light. That's light, light traveling at the speed of light. But when you trap it in this sort of informational um, topological structure, like a, it's almost akin to a black hole in a lot of ways. And, and there's a lot of interesting overlaps in the theories that are talked about and uh, discussed in this aftermath. But let's get into the, the key stuff and what everyone's been waiting for. I think like the most plausible is that she got... She got yanked back to China to work for them for in secret. I, I think I, I don't remember. I don't remember who told me this, but I, if I remember right, the story that, to me that seemed the I most plausible was she got uh, sick. I think we should listen to Tony because he knows her. Yeah, yeah. No, good call on this, yeah, Mark. By the way, well, Tony's yeah, he's a good. He's right here. He's waiting to talk. Go ahead, Tony. Oh. Um, I talked to a kid about two, maybe three years ago at a conference here in Huntsville. And he said he had talked to Ning Lee about a year or two before that. So, so we're talking now five years at least ago that she was still here in Huntsville, uh, living somewhere here in Huntsville. Uh, but since she lives in Huntsville area, I would think if somebody searched the obituaries for Huntsville, if she died, they'd find her. Uh, her, her son lives in the United States and is kind of, I think is kind of a property guy. So I, he owns property in Huntsville and uh, somewhere else in the United States. So I don't think she would have went back to China unless she was forced. I, I do know she went back when she had her, uh, her her cancer episode to get some Chinese medicine, but she came back from that. I, I, I talked hmm. to her after that. <clears throat> so, uh, but yeah, she's yeah. quite a bit older than me. So um, she's getting up, up in age there, at least 10 years older than I am. Well, maybe she just didn't like the, maybe she got tired of the publicity. You know, she was in the media a lot, and, right? Maybe she just got tired of it. I have no idea. I know she got, uh, took a project with the Army after we did the superconducting one to continue some superconducting work. And uh, we heard she was messing with some chemicals that she should have been wearing, uh, you know, like a full garment to protect her. And she was handling it with her hands and got poisoned from that. So, and I don't think I've, I've talked to her since then, but this kid, like I said, at least five years ago, she was still here in Huntsville. Hmm. So there you have it. At least five years ago, she was still there in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, maybe we'll uh, try and get a hold of, you know, someone can get a hold of her and uh, get her, get an interview with her, get an email for her, or contact information or a point. That would be great to, get her on to you know to share her perspective and i hope that she's doing okay and that she's all right with that uh unfortunate news of her getting poisoned while working for the army um definitely some stuff to look into here uh you know it kind of defeats the rumor that she had gone to china and was working for the chinese government on anti-gravity and um also i had heard that she had been working for applied science or applied materials in some capacity, but I'm not sure. Um, that was just uh, some some information that got passed on to me. But anyways, there you have it. Um, we also had an aftermath, uh, in the aftermath of this discussion, we got uh, some really interesting people on who I'm gonna have back on to have more discussions with us, including one guy that was talking about 
of his experiments having something to do with the moon and that this T.T. Brown, Thomas Townsend Brown had reported that the moon, the moon, yes, the moon, uh, had, um, had something to do with the experiments that they worked more when there was a moon overhead and the, the, the cycles of the moon, the microgravity, um, would affect whatever, cause warp fields, if they're caused by gravity, you know, this, this may be, you know, there's might be something to it. There might be something there. I don't know. I thought it was cool and maybe significant. And if it's in the lab notes and other people um, should be aware of it and, and, and something worth mentioning that, you know, like, Hey, let's, let's, if we're doing warp drive experiments and stuff like this, let's pay attention to moon position and cycles and, and the date of the experiment and all that kind of stuff. Cause it's super important for later experimenters to go back on your data, to know when you, what day you took the experiment and what time and everything. So anyways, Make sure um, you're taking good data, and uh, we'll have, we'll investigate all these weird anomalies and mysteries more on the Alien Scientist channel. Thanks for watching, and um, I don't know where my camera went, but have a nice day.